Uh, tell me exactly what you've seen on the ground so far. I mean, you obviously want to want to get a perspective of Israel in this war, and and um, you know, you 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 told us something yesterday about someone who saw firsthand what happened on October seven. But right now, what is the situation of things in Israel as we speak? Right. So we landed here on Sunday. And I was landed here on Sunday morning, actually, um, in the middle of the night, about 3 a.m. or so. Um, set off ooh, around midday, and it hasn't stopped, literally. So the first stop, we went, first we met by the um, a representative from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Then we headed to what one would only describe as a, as a pit stop, you know, you know those sort of places where bikers would stop when they're on their way out, that kind of thing, where it's a makeshift um, restaurant, cafe, you know, food shack. Well, yeah. this particular food, you know, sort of pit stop was or was made by, um, it was built by volunteers immediately after October 7th for um the IDF soldiers as their way of supporting. So it became somewhere where IDF soldiers would stop to refuel, you know, eat, not fuel as in fuel for the petrol, but to refuel their souls, mm. talk to their people, um, talk to their people, you know, just hang out for a bit before um, then going into Gaza or those who needed to come out of Gaza. Sorry, I'm just going to step out of the bus mm. because people are coming into the bus away, but we don't get lots of noise. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, you know, those who want to come out of Gaza, you know, again, just to kind of relax, that's what that pit stop is. So literally, as you can imagine, we were in southern Israel Mm -hmm. Gaza was all about from where we were. Then we moved on. I was able to talk some idea. A lot of them, they want to be on camera. Um, some of them, they will talk to you off record. Then we moved on to a place called, it's a kibbutz. And it was one of the kibbutz that was heavily, heavily affected. Um, it's called Fa'atza, literally. Let me explain how close this place is to Gaza to you. If you think, you know, sometimes you're in Ozumba, and if you look across, you can see um, Queens Drive. You know, there's the water separating, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of distance. Mm -hmm. That's literally how far it is, with mm -hmm. just two perimeter fence. So Gaza is on the other side. Israel is on this side. This kibbutz is on this side. There's just a perimeter fence or two perimeter fence. Between the perimeter fence, there's possibly, I don't know, a meter, two meters. But beyond the second one, then you've got Gaza. Okay? And we get to see the gates, how they were able, how Hamas was able to infiltrate into Israel, going through those, you know, the, the perimeter of things that separated them. We actually saw the gates that were um, thrown, that were that were pushed down, um, and with these are electrified fences. It's not that they weren't electrified. So we met them. We got. We spoke to um, Major David, who is one of the main people, actually taking journalists around, and he talked us through. What happened? He talked us through. Um, he said, "Look, people, everybody asking why Israel doing this, and when I show you through this kibbutz, when you see the destruction here, perhaps you'll understand." So he walked us through the kibbutz. And, and when you think a kibbutz, for our listeners who don't know, it's basically a gated community, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like a sort of a co-op gated community so um you know they employ their own gardeners those kind of things so the states live in so mm -hmm. they boot in which mm -hmm. much um so we walk through now this particular boot even more interesting because it has single people or young families with you know one or two kids so it's mainly young people that are there Okay, mm -hmm. that's the kind of profile of the people who live there. Um, we walk through and you do see destruction. I mean, there's no other way to explain it, but 
destruction after destruction. And, and one of the words that came to my head yesterday, as we were walking through, um, at one point where we, we are introduced to a gentleman who their group are the ones that actually first responders that picked up the bodies on the floor. And as he continues to tell us what they saw, the one word that kept coming to my head is vengeance, vengeance. It was such a vengeful attack that it, 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 it was almost personal, but obviously not personal to the individual, does that make sense? So the, the fury of it, you can see it, you can smell it. Um, so today, which brings me on to today, because there's so much to tell you, yeah. but we don't have time. Mm-hmm. We've literally just left the army, the army headquarters. Okay. Why is that important? Well, there's a 45 minutes video, which is a collage of footages from Hamas body cam, from Israel first responders, from victims, social media um, uh, handles, from their phones, footage, etc., etc. Well, this particular 45 minutes film has been shown across the world, only to selected few because you're not even allowed to take your phone inside. So we all had to leave our phones. We could only take our notebooks. Everybody left your phone, your bag, and everything. You can't even have an AirPod. Nothing electronic on you. Well, that's well, like that's like going to the Pentagon. You can't take your phone in it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So there was quite a few of us in there. And again, when you watch footage after footage after footage that has been, you know, sort of threaded together to create this 45 minutes, a couple of stuck out to me. I don't have my notes in front of me, but they stuck out and they stuck in my head. Number one, the length of time that it took for responders to get there, for the idea to respond. You know, there were footages at, at 10 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. There were footages started from 5.59 a.m. So, do you understand? Mm-hmm. How long did it take for this thing, this, this horror to stop? That's one. The other thing that I saw was where other footages had time on them, what I didn't notice was first responders or responders, so they would always write responders' footage. Well, all the responders' footage, as far as I can remember, none of them had a time on it, which is rather curious, Mary Ann, because you and I know if an ambulance arrives, they note the time, right? Mm-hmm. If a police arrives, they note the time. Mm-hmm. So why did all the first res- all the responders' videos not have a time on it? I don't know. But there were no time on any of them. Hmm. That's two. Number three. Number three is okay. Let me get the shock factor out of the way. We did see a body, a head, a body beheaded, literally cut off. It was a body of a soldier, a native soldier. He was there. They already killed him, and they literally cut his head off. We saw that. Mm-hmm. The footage is there. Okay. Um, We see women being dragged and taken away as hostages. We see footages of them taking those hostages into Gaza. We see, you know, some people, the crowd that are there. I don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. We know it's in Gaza. Those crowds chanting Allah Akbar. Some of them hitting the hostages. These are people that have been taken hostages, by the way. Okay. Also, now here's the thing. I noticed two things. Several things were said, but two things were said that was curious by Hamas. By Hamas attackers. Number one, they're about to shoot somebody, and, and I can't remember whether it was male or female. I think it was female. It was at the Nova Festival, I think, if I remember rightly. And they said to her, Are you IDF? Are you IDF? I think she must have said no because we don't see them shoot her. Okay. So, so it means, so it means they they were targeting soldiers, um, Israeli soldiers. That's what you mean. 
it would it would, it would seem so. yeah see them kill IDF and the word that one of them said was um, children murderers when they killed IDF just mm. okay so um, so again I keep going back to the word vengeance 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 it was such a vengeful and horrific attack mm. number three before I get back because they're waiting for me mm -hmm. is there is a footage of a father and two boys, okay? This is their home CCTV. So this father and two boys, they go, they're trying to escape. You know, remember, everybody, I think, um, 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 what do you call it? Those shelters are a few feet away from everybody's house, but mm. most people tend to have one in their house. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like strong rooms where you can escape to, yeah. bunkers. So this father and his two kids, their mother is not around. They've realized something is going on. They're in their underpants. They're running to try and get into the safe room. They get to the safe room. Hamas goes in there, shoots the father, but they don't touch the boys, which was really curious. Then they follow, they take the boys back to the house. The boys are sitting and they're crying. One of them is screaming, my dad. One of them is screaming, I want my mommy. Hamas guy is there, walks casually into the fridge, picks up milk, drinks the milk, doesn't say anything to the boy, and it goes off. Hmm. The next thing we see, doesn't touch them, doesn't hit them, nothing. The next thing we see is the mother of the mother comes back because she's comes, she comes to the house with um with security. The, they call the village security, so I get yeah. security from the kibbutz. Um, she comes back. They go straight to the hiding room, okay? Mm -hmm. As they go to the hiding room, of course, she sees her husband has been killed. She's totally devastated. She collapses. Da, da, da. They take her away, but of course, I guess she must have seen that her sons are were safe. Not they were safe. Yes, yes. They were safe. Um, so we see footages um, of the we see footages of the the festival. We see footages of the lots of young people indiscriminate shooting. Mm. You know, at the porter, the portable toilets. You know, indiscriminate shooting at the portable toilets. Irati, Ira um, I have so many questions, but because of time, you know, I have too many questions I want to ask you, and I think that we can do this again maybe before you're back because i have so many questions yes i can hear you i have so yeah. many questions and yeah. i think that maybe i'm gonna let you go now um when we talk again i'm gonna ask you those questions and you and i are going to banter because of some of these things that you've mentioned especially the fact that the hamas people kept talking about the idea of soldiers as children murderers and we've seen so many yes, children I can hear you now. yes and we've seen so many children murdered in gaza and then there's a lot to talk about irati so i'm gonna let you go I can hear you now. yeah i'm going to let you go now and then when you when we talk again we're going to banter on most of these issues and the things that you picked um while you were in israel okay okay great you. all right Bye -bye. All right. Thank you. Well, that's uh, Irati Bakari Yusuf just giving us, a, um, you know, a, a brief background to all of the things that, or the findings, all that she's been shown by the Israeli government in Israel and what she's picked, the, the reporter in her. And of course, her curiosity levels have reason and it's very worthy to note that children were unharmed. Children were unharmed. And of course, that very interesting story about a soldier um, or a lady who was asked if she was an IDF soldier and when she said no, she was left alone. There's so much to this. And it's for me, if you ask me, the Israel-Palestinian conflict is <laughs> is a potpourri of things, too many things coming together. But I also have held on to what Iriti has called vengeful attack. Of course, when somebody re is saying, I'm going to take my pound of flesh, it means that something was done to them. But hey... We'll get to the bottom of it um, within the week because we'll go back to talking about this with Zureti. Um, and I really, really want to get into it with, with her because I have statistics on children that have been killed. Uh, a little girl who was just amputated recently because of, you know, the attack on Gaza recently was killed um, finally while she was just recouping from her amputation. And several others. I saw a man holding her, his dead child today and there was no head on it. The pictures that are coming out of Gaza are heart-wrenching. 
It's unfortunate. But, but we also see videos coming out from Israel. They're partying. They're sitting by the, 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 the sea. They're having a great time by the beach. Yes, they have soldiers fighting in Gaza and several other places. And we've seen all kinds of things. But of course, Israel has an opportunity to tell us this story.